Hi, my name's Al Hari. My pronouns are they, them, and... Hello, my name is Lobo Cavalry, but you can call me Cav. My pronouns are they, them. I'm taking over as host today to talk a little bit about Steam Powered Giraffe. If you don't know, SPG is an improv musical pantomime ensemble from San Diego. Each of the band members plays a robot with their own backstories and personalities, all of whom exist in the canon. The canon is a kayfabe. This is defined as the portrayal of staged events within an industry as real or true, usually in reference to wrestling, the idea that two rivals in a wrestling match actually hate each other in real life. It's sort of a suspension of disbelief. A similar thing is applied in the world of Steam Powered Giraffe's live performances. Even though everyone is aware that the people on stage are not real robots, the audience pretends to live in a reality of SBG's home universe, where they are automatons, the Walter workers are mechanics, the blue matter malfunctions cause actual danger, etc. This is especially apparent in the AI introduction, where Bebop references finding the exit in case of a radiation malfunction. While the actors do not remain in character during fan meetups in order to maintain some degree of separation, they fully play into their personas on stage. During the early days of Steam Powered Giraffe, where they bust in Balboa Park, this was especially clear. The actors would mingle with their audience before shutting down and rebooting in character. Whenever someone would have to break character, either by laughing or having to fix something, they would shut down again. As they moved to stage performances, the robots would come on stage after an in-universe breakdown of their origins. It's highly immersive and highly impressive for a number of reasons. There's obviously a large degree of physical acting involved to continue the illusion. Each character actor does things a little differently to portray their own specific brand of automaton, and it is there I'd like to focus my attention to begin explaining how masterful their use of character work is. There are six Walter automatons, canonical robots in SPG's lore. They're portrayed as siblings created in the late 1800s by Peter A. Walter I for musical performance, but being forced to fight in a number of wars later on. Their names are Rabbit, The Spine, Zero, Hatchworth, The John, and Upgrade. Rabbit is the oldest, and the robot that has been upgraded the least. She largely runs on her original clockwork and malfunctions more than the others as a result of this. She's known to break down during Honey Bee, the band's most famous song, and she also glitches often during stage shows. Her movements are very disjointed, wrist, then elbow, then upper arm, for example, rather than one fluid movement. She tends to walk stiffly and does not blink as often as a human would, portraying a very cool, uncanny vibe. Her makeup often shows a degree of wear and tear as well. When her face was copper, she was covered in verdigris, but now, with her face being a porcelain-like in-universe material called impossium, cracks are drawn in to show her age. The spine, in almost the opposite direction, runs the smoothest of the automatons. In lore, he was given a human upgrade in the 50s, and thus moves in a fluid way to contrast his siblings. David Michael Bennett, his actor, is an incredible pantomime artist who is able to portray the spine's robotic aspects in subtle ways. He always stops short when he moves, as if his joints can only move so far before locking, and he's perfected my favorite piece of the spine, which is his I'm trying really, really hard to look human, but I don't really know how smile. Zero has perfected the sort of movement you picture in a Disneyland animatronic. It's smooth and looks almost right, but is nonetheless still a little strange. His introduction is a prevalent example of his speech becoming more robotic as well, and he does it very well. By lowering his tone and chopping up his sentence, he sounds like a broken down machine like IBM 7094. And I, of course, as always, am zero. He moves his joints one at a time to appear a little choppy without overdoing it, and swivels his head often and stiffly in order to maintain a robotic air. He also tends to stare at a fixed point, not blinking or making eye contact, which tricks the mind into thinking you're watching a very advanced machine. Hatchworth uses his speech patterns to appear more robotic. He stresses opposing syllables and speaks in a monotone, which gives an interesting vibe like a computer mimicking human speech without processing things like syllable stressing or emotive words. Hello, I'm Hatchworth, and unlike you, I have a hatch. Sometimes I pull sandwiches out of it, sometimes badgers. He is also very talented at cartoon-like rapid movements. He's a well-functioning robot, but he still doesn't move like a human would because he isn't human at all. His expressions and his emotions are exaggerated, again reminiscent of an animatronic you might find in a children's entertainment zone. The John can basically moonwalk with his whole body. <laughs> he slides without it seeming like he's moving his feet at all, very much like an animatronic on a motion track. It's a very satisfying ability to move places without seeming to put in any muscular effort. As stated, this mimics running on a motion track, where robots don't move their feet at all, and it's very impressive. 
upgrade in the opposite direction, uh, is very stiff, fitting as she hasn't been upgraded since 1996. Please play Pogs with her. I haven't had an upgrade since 1996. Who wants to play Pogs? Her joints have set idle positions, her hands splay out, her wrists bend backwards, and her elbows are slightly bent. She only pauses in exaggerated expressions, as if programmed to only make a few faces. In fact, all of the robots have a set script, bits they complete during part of each show. Of course, the other part is a live comedy improv act, but the scripted bits play in such a way that sell the pre-programmed nature of the act. My name is the Spy. My name is the Spy. Hi, my name's the Spy. Howdy, my name's the Spy. They thrive on repetition. That's why the improvisation bits, in contrast, are so funny. The robotic nature of the acts allow the human heart of it, both the humor and the emotional songs, to shine through. The other piece of the immersive K-Fabian, which I think is a word, aspect of this act are the various non-robot performers, specifically the Walter Workers. Currently, there are two on stage, Walter Workers, Chelsea, and Camille, the band's in-universe mechanics and out-of-universe dancers and merch workers. The Walter Workers became a piece of the act after viewers noticed that the merch salespeople were not in character, pulling away from the act in the kayfabe. Thus, the people selling merch began to dress in black and white outfits with blue hair, Walter mechanics who have begun to be affected by blue matter radiation. They eventually joined the act as mechanics who fixed the robots when they shut down in a slapstick-style comedic act, in which at least one of the robots is whacked with a giant wrench. Usually Rabbit, because she's so, so broken, and I love her so, so much. <laughs> The added factor of humans from this universe, people who spend their time fixing the robots rather than just the robots themselves, gives a layer of believability and relatability, because at the end of the day, who among us haven't had an exhausting job? Beyond that, it's also very fun to think about the wider implications of a world uh, where sentient robots both exist and interact with the quote-unquote current world. Of course they need trained professionals to take care of them. So what's the job like? What do you have to know? And how are you allowed to wear flowy skirts while fixing clockwork automatons who constantly break? Like, genuinely, who's letting you do that? Where's your safety PPE? Goggles on your eyes don't count! If it's not obvious by how I look, I'm a technician, and the Walter workers are my favorite character. One day they'll have written lore I can dream. Anyway, all of these questions allow you to slip further into the canon. So, we've established that SPG's intricate and unique acting choices, along with their commitment to keeping the show as immersive as possible, creates a really vibrant and unique live experience. That's one of the reasons it's such a lasting act. In similar ways to live performances of cult films or other storytelling classics, people get into SPG, me included. It's such a creative, vibrant community, and I think that's because each artist involved, from the musicians to the dancers to the visual artists to the people that are all of those things at once, work to make their pieces of SPG their own. To me, at least, it reads like a labor of love and an incredible amount of hard work. Personally, I think it's rad. A bunch of folks in a community went and made a fun, independently run, and interesting story without having to stick to what any company wanted from them. That's why I personally think that 1896 is SBG's best album. It was made with the goal of doing what the artists wanted, how they wanted, and a whole album was given enough time to really marinate, like a soup. Each song is a banger. Please listen to the overture. It's very underrated. And I can't wait to see what they do on 7th. Also, I'd just like to note for posterity that I would listen to Brian Barber and read the phone book. In conclusion, it's all about how capitalism corrupts and creativity can only truly thrive outside of a corporation, you know? And it's also about how I just really love those silly robots. Thank you so much for listening. You can subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more content like this. Please be sure to support SBG on Patreon as well. Thank you to Sophia for getting me to think about all this. And thanks most of all to Owl Hurry for letting me borrow their channel. Willingly, because this was a planned thing, I promise. Yeah, planned for next week. Well, you know how portals are. I, I don't control the portals. Yes, you do. Yeah.